Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing doing business in Nigeria. How easy is it? <laughs> and are you a businessman or woman out there? Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wish Your Africa One with the hashtag Waze or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 And we still have our guest, Ayokunu. Are you there with us? Yes, please, I am here. All right, so before we went on a break, I asked the question about, you know, how, I, have you gone to ask me particularly, how do you get the data as to how um, the problems or the challenges that you're trying to tackle? So instead of doing something like a blanket um, um, solution is specific to, you know, maybe a pool of um, SMEs complaining about a particular thing, that's one. Then secondly, the role of corruption, you know, how... Um, how has corruption affected the ease of doing business? You know, uh, because um, a fertilizer that was supposed that is clearly written on the bag of fertilizer that the government is providing for farmers to make them, you know, to make it easy for them to do business, clearly written five thousand naira. Somebody sells it at nine thousand five hundred naira. That is very huge for an SME. The cost. Imagine, just imagine if they have to. Yeah, I mean. Um, um, buy so much, you know, that's a huge cost, you know, markup for, for, for a business. And at the end of the day, the ripple effect on the production output and everything, you know, is, is, I, can't, I, can't, I can't measure that. So what exactly is the rule of corruption in um, the ease of doing business? And how do you identify the real challenges that SMEs go through? So two things. Um, one is that we do a lot of stakeholder engagements. And when I say a lot, I'm not by enemy saying we've had we've done enough, but a lot in the terms of the resources that we have and the wherewithal available. I mean, I just I spoke about the subnational um, literation tours that we had last year. Uh, in each of the states, we had a, a moment with the with the chief executive of the state, with the governor, and we sent invitations across. Um, in Lagos, for example, we had one on October, October 10, 20, 2019, and with the Lagos State Governor in attendance, senior government officials, and a cross-section of people from the business community, and we listened to them. The questions were not scripted. The event wasn't scripted, so people were able to ask the questions that they wanted to ask. So that, that's on level, and we had, we've had five of that um, um, between October of last year and uh, the February of last year. So that's on one level. Second level is the www.report.gov.ng, uh, which um, Akanimo, I believe, spoke, spoke about earlier. The report.gov is, is an gives a provide citizens the opportunity to log complaints and provide feedbacks, and we analyze those complaints. And that gives us a sense of where the, the, the shoe pinches. If we find a, re, a, a, re, a reoccurring complaint coming in, then that gives us an indication that there might be some problem in that area, and we then engage the, 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 um, the players in that space. So there's a lot of um, stakeholder engagement going. And we also have organized groups who also reach out to us, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, the Chambers of Industry, different groups writing to us, and that also gives us a sense. So we actually don't start reforms until we are sure that the business community, business community actually requires that reform to be to be implemented. So that's one. Corruption is is, is, a, is an elephant in the room, um, and and uh, you find corruption um, uh, upon or you find its effect in almost everything that that we do. From um, I mean, think about any any area of life. Corruption has its own impact. So so it, the business community is not is not is not in any way unique. We know that if we improve transparency and make sure the information is available, find uh, also give people the opportunity to provide feedback like the reports go uh, reports go that NG provides that opportunity, make sure there's clarity in the process. We believe that those things might um, minimize uh, the impact uh, of the impact and the occurrence of corrupt tendencies in doing business in Nigeria. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll let you go. Um, okay, so I, I mean, I just wanted to quickly, um, I took a story earlier today um, in the show about the, the president talking about um, Forex and banning Forex for the importation of food items. Uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about the banning of maize, the reimportation of certain quantities of maize. Um, and when I look at your... Um, your office and the kind of members of the council. So we have ministers, we have the head of the CBN, we have all these people around the table. Are you part of these decisions when they are being made? Because who speaks 
for the common man. If you are working to make the plight of the common man trying to do business in Nigeria easier with your three focus areas where one is the entry and exit of goods, then are you part of this conversation? And how much pull do you have on this table? Because really, it's like you are trying to do something on one hand and the government on the other hand is pulling you back. So I'd, I'd just like you to share some light on that for us. I would not by any means um, give the impression that I sit with the president on a daily basis and make this decision process. <laughs> not by any stretch of my imagination. Uh, so at the level where I sit, we, we do that engagement. And what is important is that when we listen to people like you, as you're speaking today, we pass that information to those who are uh, uh, who need it and who probably make the final com final decision. Um, we The jury is still out. Um, the, the announcement on, on forex restriction on setting on food at times and, and a number of whatever, it, the jury is still out. It, 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 the decision was made in, I think, less than 48 hours. And I'm sure government is listening and would also um, listen to stakeholders. And if government needs to review that decision, uh, given the fact that government is also at the... Um, um, that government has access to, I'm sure that that decision will be taken in the best interest of the people. But what we say is that we, there is a clear challenge with Forex at the moment. And it's not even the, the making of losing government. It's just that we are in an, we live in an unprecedented time where, I mean, I was just reading the news, um, following the news a few days ago, a South African economy contracted by 51%, United Kingdom 26%, we, the Q2 GDP contracted by 6.1% Nigeria. So it's an unprecedented moment. Uh, unemployment has jumped to 8.3% in America from a low point of about 3.5% just six months ago. So these are unprecedented times and new challenges have, been, have sprung up. And government is sure... Um, listening to, to people and making sure that the policies that are made uh, speak, give the, give the right solution. And in cases where those solutions appear to be, uh, to appear, appear to uh, not to meet the target, some fine tuning will be. So it's, a, it's, it's an ongoing process. And I believe that as you continue to engage the government, these policies will fine tuned to make sure that the, 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 um, the benefits get to the average Nigerian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Uti actually took that question from my mouth. So I, I suspect that um, she's in my mind. But notwithstanding, there are two questions I want to ask you. First, I would say yeah. congratulations on getting the new Kama 2020 signed. That's a big one. I think <laughs> it's a big one for you. Yeah, I, I actually think. thought that would be the first thing you talk about. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one for okay, you. Okay, you said the best for the last. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a big one for your office. There are too many good things. Um, so we no longer need like three people, two people to, to start a company. You can start a company by yourself. The fact that you can hold a virtual AGM, the fact that you don't have to appoint a company secretary. So many good things. But first, how do you cascade these good things down because for the common so i always bring it down to the common man and if you heard us when we started the show we looked at the huge chunk of businesses especially in the micro space that are not registered and if we're going by SME, then that's a over 90 um, percent now will this new act now and make small businesses go on with their business registration and how easy i know that um the platform has been created but i can tell you a lot of people are still facing frustrations doing that themselves without employing the the so services of a lawyer mm -hmm. so are we looking in that process and what what is it what uh, what are you doing to cross the gun oh lastly when is it going to be implemented i know it's been signed but when is it going to be implemented Thank you. Very, very good question. So the first thing is that um, registration is important. Um, I mean, it's important, right? Uti, Uti mentioned that probably we need to come up with different approaches, but whatever the approach it is that we employ, the bottom line is that businesses have to be registered. That's one. Two is that in recognition of that, uh, the pre President Muhammad Obwari announced on Monday uh, that there will be 200, we expect that 250,000 new businesses will be at, will be registered, business names will be registered at no cost, right, to businesses. So we expect the National Association of MSMEs, different market groups to take advantage of that process and some regulations and details will be issued on how that will, be, will, uh, will happen. 
And in addition to that, government is now going to um, bring the, re- the cost of registering business names. Uh, we'll have a discounted price of 6,000 Naira. So we expect that I would also encourage some people to get that so that we can reduce the number of those who are in the informal sector. So that's one. Uh, and I think that that speaks to, to, to the registration process. And of course, we've got to communicate it. Uh, law firms, lawyers, accountants, people have to speak to their clients, churches, uh, mosques, religious organizations need to pass this news because the, the, truth, the truth is that um, government by itself cannot entirely or only reach all everybody. So we require groups to tell, to sort of, sort of, like train the trainers. So we expect that that to happen. Then um, the second thing, before I answer the second question, I, uh, before I came online, I, I listened to your, to your banter and uh, I knew there was a conversation about how 30,000 is small wow, and, I was that, to that. and all of that. And I was coming to that. I was coming to that, Ayokono. For people. I should say this, um, and I think Akanimo would, I would accept because she works with a financial institution. Uh, three years ago, three, four, five years ago, NTIC actually said that 98% of deposits in the bank is less than 500,000 naira. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So let's not um, simplify or dismiss the fact that 30,000 naira will is a big deal to some people. I mean, and it's a payroll support. It's not saying that, I mean, in US, US government um, came up with the CARES Act, the Corona Access, I mean, the CARES Act, that introduced some, um, some politics um, for, uh, to citizens. And it was about $600 that was given to, to the average American, right? $600, I mean, minimum wage of, of about $7. You would also see that it, it, it's never going to be, because government alone cannot... I don't know. Don't spoil no, this one. No, no, no. Oh, no. You have been doing well. Don't spoil it. Because no. are you trying to are you trying to empower carousellers? Or what exactly no. are we... I don't so, know. So, <laughs> so, uh, carousellers, so these are micro, right? Yeah. Micro. Even so government... Government came up with 100 billion naira for healthcare but, sector. 100 billion. I, 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 I look at our yeah. current reality. Actually. Now, let me take a question or a comment from uh, one of our viewers from the UK. His name is Ade. He says, "Good evening. How would survive? How would business survive in Nigeria when PHCN tariff is high mm -hmm. and the organisations are not honest with their billings? We want all infrastructures to be good in all shape. Now, let me tell you why I say that. Thirty thousand naira is a no-brainer for me because." The cost of living in convert Nigeria, it convert it and check the cost of living in Nigeria. It's, it's actually not significant. It will not change my economy, right? Even if I'm an a carousella, it won't oh, change oh, sorry, it. Oh, sorry, oh, that the payroll support is not for you by any stretch. I'm not right? saying me. I'm looking at myself as an so, carousella. So you no, 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 you can't, can't. Because see, the truth is that different policies are for different groups. This is a payroll support form. It is not by any means to take care of Osaru. Osaru is not one of those in the low low He's income structure okay. so, so, yeah. in the country. Like, so, I so, what so, so, so let's be really clear about that. <laughs> I can't tell you guys. So Ayakunu, what I'd like to point out, and this is what we were trying to yeah. say, is when you take the individual amount, whether it be 30,000 mm -hmm. or 50,000, and you take the volume of businesses which they want to, and I think you've actually made it a bit worse for me when you say payroll support, because I think which payroll are you supporting is the Akarasella still. <laughs> but the reality of it is, no, 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 what no, is no, the, um, what's this? So, so the, the, the thing for me is, so, how about so are you, you take saying, that money? I, I want to ask you a question. So, so let okay. me ask you a question. Are you saying that you don't know anybody in Nigeria that earns 30,000, that is an employee of the firm, or they earn 50000 on a monthly basis. No, I agree. Like there are know. people that earn that you amount. Mean, but when you say that it is a, a palliative measure for that business, you've given me money to pay one employee for one month. And then what? So my point is, when you take the collective 100, amount... 100,000 employees, 300,000 employees have been targeted. For right? one month. And if you, if you apply, you might have five employees. Most businesses, most micro-businesses don't okay, have time. I hear, you, <laughs> I hear you, but let me just quickly make the point that I'm trying to make. Because this is where sometimes Sorry. there is a large distrust between the populace and the government. When you do that, there is no way you can justify 
as you have failed to do with the three of us, by the way, that this thing makes sense. The reality of it is, how about you take that pool of money and do something substantial, that substantial that can help, even if it, it means you are putting in some organization that is there to provide information or something, so that we can actually see that the government is making efforts. Know that when you give Fix 13, the 000, road. all I would do for the lack of a better word is nimu. <laughs> Okay, let me take some more Uthi, questions. Uthi, please, please, before we put I just need to ask. I, I've, not, I've not read about you, but I'd like to ask, do you run a business? Um, well, yes, again, in the, in the, in the, in the era of... No, let me put it this run way. A, I, run a, I run, run a business. I run a business, I run a run a business but I don't run you know, a registered I want business. To, but I, I also have... I, run, I don't run... A, well, I now run a registered business, but it wasn't registered until a few weeks ago. But the reality of it is, if you even say this, we all have... I'd like to ask you a question. Okay, what's the question? Let me ask you another question. If someone says, I'm going to pay salary of your workers, mm -hmm. five workers, and I'm going to pay their salary for three months as a support oh, to your business, months. will it not go some way? Okay. I'd like to know. We'll leave it there. I we'll leave it there. Go. So Nifemi is saying that what is the handshake between Karma and other regulators, e.g. CBN? Uh, some new wins in Karma might not apply to regulations for these regulators. That's from Nifemi. No. Okay. Okwe okay, says, so I, I hear we have made things easy. I hope we are also conscious of protecting Nigerians as regards foreigners coming to do business here. Yeah, quickly. So we just have like one minute left. <laughs> so so Kama, Kama, Kama is going through the process of gazette. Once it's gazetted, the time of implementation will be, uh, will be issued, will, will, be, will be part of that gazette. So please look out for and, and that information will come out. Come on, regulators, because the law is new, there's some engagement and some policies might be, need to be adjusted to reflect the law because those policies could not have happened before the law happened, yeah. before the law came on board. So I just want to say that we know there are difficult problems and, and I know that the cynicism in, in every Nigerian is so high, but please, let's just take, sometimes take a moment and let us... I Look wanted to ask you on border closure because Uti for. took it. I wanted to ask Thank you on border closure. How how is affecting the ease of doing business? But oh, sadly, we are really really <laughs> running out of time. But can you just say in one I'll minute? Like okay, so so border closure. Um, a report has been submitted and government is looking at it, and a decision will be made soon on that. Really? Okay, we'll leave you yeah. there. We will call you back. Please come back. I enjoyed, my, I enjoyed myself, ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you for having for coming on, on the show. Quickly, one minute, ladies. <sighs> okay, go first. Well, <laughs> I would say if you look at the plans for themselves, and by for themselves, I mean if you read the words, the, if you read the policies, if you read... It looks good on paper. It looks good on paper. Mm -hmm. It looks good if it can be implemented. I think one of the questions that I wanted to ask that we don't have time is what has been the challenge with imp implementation? Because they, they said you've done over 140 reforms. Can we just move this beautiful thing to life? That's the only okay. thing I'd have to say. Quickly, Uti. I wish I could say that after 40, 55 minutes of the show that I feel better. Um, I know that a lot of good work is being done. Um, I think that a lot more needs to be done at the grassroots level to elevate the people who are elevating our economy. Thank you. Um, so the approach needs to be different. Absolutely. You know, Nigeria has always been a mono economy. Oil is oil is oil. So now we have a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, going and divesting, you know. So what are we doing? as a country to, to pull them. those people up i don't believe you should give me thirty thousand naira. give me something don't give me a rotten fish give me something <laughs> that me when i bet. invest oh, my I time and, no oh, it's I true when i invest my time and energy on it i can make triple or ten times that but uh, you see one of the things that he said that was very valid is that because the government has identified this and that's why we have pebec okay so okay. let's okay. thank so let us pebec. wait thank you for pebec <laughs> and we are waiting to see implementation like uh um, ak has rightly said so thank you guys for watching please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m it's been a very insightful conversation we waited to the end before we brought out the fire <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much, Ayokuno, our guest. Now, please keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. And this is what we are begging our government. I believe starting any business should be as easy as a 10-year-old starting a lemonade stand. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Make it easy for us and let us start to, you know, grow our economy. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. Bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye.